When you think about truth in advertising, it's different in a political context than it is in a business context. In a business context, your goal is to get as many consumers as possible to purchase your product. So if you're Procter & Gamble, if you're Pepsi, if you're Coca-Cola, you want everybody to like your product. Um, and so you don't often spend a lot of time doing negative advertising. You may do some comparative advertising or competitive advertising. You say Coca-Cola tastes better than Pepsi. Um, so some very simple approaches, but you don't tend to spend a lot of your ad spend on those kind of messages. Often the reason why is if you're attacking your uh, competing brand, you may hurt your brand. You may came off, come off as negative, um, you may come off as someone who's making negative claims. When you look at it in a political space, that's not as a significant of concern. So if you're pulled down, but your opponent is pulled down more, as long as you get the majority of consumers, if you will, as long as you get the majority of voters, you still win the election. So if people are frustrated with you for being negative, uh, but they also believe the claims that you're making, then you can still win the election. So this means within the context of truth and advertising that you have a lot more flexibility in terms of the messages that you use and the things that you may say. And there's a whole side industry that's now kind of emerged within the media to judge the truth or not truth of political claims. So there have been ads by both candidates during this last or during this current election cycle by both Romney and Obama uh, that have been rated you know, pants on fire, that have been basically called lies uh, by these uh, things like Politica Fact and other such organizations, where they really are saying, look, this isn't a true claim, that the statement that's being made in the ad is not true. Um, but both campaigns um, consider the benefit of making these sort of negative claims uh, outweigh the sort of the detriment. Additionally, this campaign cycle is different in that you have super PAC money and these super PACs are running ads uh, that are also kind of maybe dubious in terms of claims and are running into issues around truth and advertising. And it's interesting from a, a brand management perspective, from a presidential elective per, election perspective, as to who's responsible for these messages. So if the Obama campaign um, it's not supposed to coordinate, or the Romney campaign is not supposed to coordinate with these super PAC messages, and you're looking at from a truth in advertising and a brand management perspective, if a super PAC associated, or uh, excuse me, not associated, a super PAC that has a state of goal of getting Romney elected makes a claim in an ad, or a super PAC has a stated goal of getting Obama elected makes a claim in an ad that's really egregious, and that really isn't untruthful, how does that affect the brand? How does that affect the Romney brand, the Romney campaign, or the Obama branded campaign? Do those campaigns then get blamed for the messages by the super PAC? And it's going to be interesting to see over the next 90 days or so before the election how that works from a brand perspective.